In today's video, we are gonna make our own inspired interpretation of this pillow right here that retails online for a whopping 50 bucks. People be cray, but we are gonna make our own inspired interpretation of that pillow for less than five in today's episode. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael, and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, your crafting and cricket channel, where I post multiple cricket tutorials every single week. So go ahead and stamp that subscribe button and ring that bell for all of the notifications because you do not want to miss a single Cricut Minute. Now, I am very excited to say that today's video is extremely beginner friendly, especially if you're new to the whole iron on vinyl, HTV, AKA heat transfer vinyl type of world. Now, for those of us who's been doing this a little bit longer, we were all newbies. We were all beginners at one point or another. And what may seem super easy to us now may seem super daunting to somebody who's just starting out. So this is for the beginners out there. So today I am using this pillowcase right here. It is 100% cotton and it is 18 inches by 18 inches. I got a four pack of these on Amazon for 12 bucks. So that averages out to be about three bucks per pillowcase because I love a bargain. And I'll put the link for these down in the description box below. I am also using the Cricut brand of Iron on Vinyl. And for those of you who may not know, Cricut always calls theirs Iron on Vinyl. Pretty much every other company calls theirs HTV or heat transfer vinyl. I like Cricut's brand enough to use it, but my favorite is the Caesar Easy Weed. I'm also using my Cricut Easy Press 2. This is the 10 inch by 12 inch version. If you have a smaller one, that's okay too. You'll just need to split up your design into multiple sections and do it that way. I'm also obviously using my Cricut, but you could really use any cutting machine for this. I'm also using a Cricut Easy Press mat a Cricut cutting mat, some parchment paper to act as a barrier between my heat source, which is my Easy Press, and my iron on vinyl. I'm also using some measuring tape, some scissors, and a weeding tool. And last but not least, a computer or even a tablet to operate your design software with. So I'm gonna go ahead and open mine up and pull up Cricut Design Space. All right, so I've opened up Cricut Design Space and I've also opened up a new project. So what I'm gonna do now is come over here to the left side of the canvas to the design panel and click on text. And in the first text box, I'm just gonna type out, hey, with a comma. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is change out the font for this. Now remember, it's okay to be inspired by a design, as in this pillow right here, but we don't wanna straight up copy it, that's for sure. So while we may go for a similar type of style, that's one thing, but straight up copying it is another. So what I wanna do is come up here to fonts, and just because I wanna make sure to use a font that everybody can use without buying anything, I'm gonna come over here to system. And all that that means by system is just fonts that are already downloaded to your computer. So I'm just gonna scroll through here and see if there's anything that jumps out to me. Okay, so there's this one right here. It's called Baskerville, which I'm pretty sure I've heard of before. And I'm pretty sure that most everybody has that already downloaded on their computer as like a default. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm, I'm pretty certain. I'm gonna go ahead and use Baskerville for this. All right, so if this word is looking a little weird to you, you're not alone. It's because of all the space in between each of the letters. So what I wanna do is go in here and reduce that amount of space um, by going up here to the top of the canvas where it says letter space and then clicking that down arrow. And as you can see, each time I click that down arrow, those letters get closer and closer and closer and closer. Okay, so I think that that's looking a little bit better, but this comma is still kind of out there on its own a little bit. Uh, just my own personal taste. I'd like to see that a little bit closer in. So what I wanna do is show you another way that you can kind of reduce the amount of space in between each letter. And that's by coming up here to the top of the canvas again, but coming over here and clicking on advanced. Now I just wanna click on ungroup to letters. And as you can see over here on the layers panel, each of these characters now are on its own layer, meaning that we can now click any of these characters and move them anywhere on the canvas that we'd like. We could also rotate them or even resize them. So now I just wanna move that comma in a little bit closer. Now I just wanna repeat that same process for the next two words. I'm gonna come over here to the left side of the page and click on text. In the text box, I'm gonna write out nice. All right, so what I'm doing now is clicking on or selecting the word nice, and then coming up here to the top of the canvas to where it says letter space again, and then clicking on that down arrow and I wanna keep doing that until I get down to point two 
because that's what we had the first word set at. I wouldn't mind seeing what this eye would look like if I scooted it over to the right hand side a little bit. That way the bottom of the eye and the bottom of the end weren't so close. So to do that, I'm gonna come back up here to advanced and click on ungroup to letters. All right, there we go. I think that looks good. Or should I say, I think that looks nice. <laughs> I'm so lame. <laughs> All right, so for our last word, I'm gonna come back over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on text again. I wanna type in but. I wanna pull it up here underneath of nice. I wanna come up here to letter space and take that down to point two as well. I think that looks good. So now I'm just gonna play around a little bit with the vertical spacing and we'll see what we come up with. All right, so I'm liking how that looks. So what I'm gonna do now is just click and drag over all of these letters. And now that everything is selected, I'm gonna come down here to the bottom right side of the page and click on attach. Now, if you were using some kind of a script font or really any font where the letters are overlapping in any way, you would want to use the weld option and not attach. So now we just need to figure out how big to make this design. So I'm gonna get my tape measure and my pillowcase, and I'm just gonna measure this out and see how big we want this to be. And all I'm really doing is just laying out the measuring tape, trying to get a visual for how big we want our design to be. So since our design is taller than it is wide, what I'm gonna do is measure out the height first to try to get an overall sense of how big we wanna make our design. Okay, so I'm wondering how 11 inches would look for the height. So what I'm gonna do is bring my computer back over here real quick. I wanna come up here to the top of the canvas again to where it says size. And right here next to height, I wanna type in 11 and then just hit enter. And just so I can see the whole image, I'm gonna come down here to the bottom left and zoom out a little bit. There we go. All right, so as you can see up here next to size, once we typed in 11, it went ahead and changed the width for us to keep the same proportions. And that is because this little padlock right here is locked. If this was unlocked, it would have only changed the height and not the width. So now that I know that the width would be close to seven and a half inches, what I'm gonna do now is just use that measuring tape to measure out seven and a half inches on here, or a little less than seven and a half inches to kind of get an idea of what that would look like. All right, so I think that, that width will look good. So let's go ahead and make it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my Cricut Maker. And while that's warming up, I'm gonna come up here to the top right side of the page and click on make it. All right, so this is probably the most important part of the entire project. You must, must, must click this little button over here on the left-hand side of the page that says mirror. It's, it's a must, you have to do this or your project would be ruined. And we do not want that, not on my watch. So make sure that that button is clicked. Now I wanna come down here to the bottom right and click on continue. And it's asking me what material I'm using. I'm just gonna click on everyday iron on. Another thing that's extremely important with all of this is how you put your iron on vinyl onto your mat. You always wanna go shiny side or pretty side down. Shiny side facing down onto the mat with this more matte side facing up. All right, so now I'm just gonna load my mat into my Cricut and then just tap this flashing arrow button to load it in. Once the Cricut logo button starts flashing, you can go ahead and tap on that to get it started. A few moments later. All right, so now I'm just gonna tap that flashing arrow button again to unload it. And as always, what I wanna do with this is flip over the mat and peel the mat off of the vinyl instead of the vinyl off the mat. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on camera or not, but you can definitely see on here where the cuts were made. So what I'm gonna do is just go and cut around that design so that I can save that vinyl for another day. Another thing that I like to do, is just take some painter's tape, roll it around my hand a few times, and then lay that down on my workspace 
and then maybe make a few more. And the reason why I like to do that is so that I can lay this vinyl, still shiny side down, so I can lay that down onto that tape and prevent it from rolling up on me while I'm trying to weed it. All right, so now I have my weeding tool and now I'm just gonna pick out one of these corners and I can get that vinyl to pull up. Once it's pulled back far enough, what you wanna do is just grab it with your hands and start pulling at an angle and very slowly. And also just kind of gently rocking it back and forth. All right, so now that most of the vinyl's gone, what we're gonna do now is just go in here and weed out some of that vinyl that's stuck inside some of these letters. All right, so here we go. And as you can see, our design is already on the transfer tape because the transfer tape is built into iron on vinyl. So one less step, right? All right, so for this pillow cover, what I'm doing is just unzipping the back side of it and I'm gonna tuck this easy press mat inside of it. All right, so to get the settings for our easy press, what I'm doing is just going to cricut.com forward slash heat guide. So since the Cricut Easy Press 2 is already selected, I'm just gonna come down here to heat transfer material and select the everyday iron on. For the base material, I'm selecting 100% cotton and I am using the Cricut Easy Press mat versus a towel. Now I just need to click apply. And it's telling me that we need to preheat the fabric for five seconds, uh, but we need to set the Easy Press to 315 degrees and apply light pressure for 30 seconds. And before we apply our vinyl to this, what I wanna do is just try to go over this a little bit and get most of the wrinkles out. And that also kind of serves as preheating it as well. So now I'm just gonna apply the vinyl. All right, so I think that looks pretty good laid out on the pillowcase. So I'm just gonna smooth it down. And now I just wanna take my parchment paper and go over top of all of this. Not only does that help protect the transfer tape and the vinyl, but also the fabric as well. All right, so I'm gonna apply the easy press going this way this time. And now that's on there, I'm just gonna tap this green button and that's gonna start the timer. And remember, just light pressure, usually just the weight of your hand will do the trick. All right, so I've given it a chance to cool down just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is just take a corner of this and just slowly start peeling back. You really just wanna watch for any pieces of vinyl that are not fully adhered to the fabric because you'd wanna go back over that if that's the case. You really just wanna pull back slowly at an angle and just kinda of do a little bit of a rocking motion to help it come off. This pillow is probably way too big for this, but I'm gonna try to make it work anyway. <laughs> I think that I like this better than the inspiration pillow. What do you all think? Let me know in the comment section below whether you like this one better or the inspiration pillow. Me personally, and I may just be a little bit biased, but I like this one better. And hey, let's be honest, what's better than a pillow that gives you a compliment? Even though in my case, it's a total lie. <laughs> If you're new around here, I would love it if you decided to join this crazy crafting and cricket community by stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that bell for all of the notifications. Because again, I post new cricket videos for you multiple times every single week and you don't wanna miss a single cricket minute. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you guys, I just started a brand spanking new cricket Facebook group that is exclusive to the subscribers of this channel. So 
make sure that you click the link in the description below and it'll take you right over there to it. Once it gets built up just a little bit, we'll be posting new tips and tricks and hacks and tutorials, everything Cricut or cutting machine related, you got it. And what I love most is that you'll be able to ask questions directly in the group and either myself or one of the moderators or just another group member can jump in there and help you out. But I love that. Like, I just love helping people in general and yeah, it just makes you feel good, doesn't it? So again, make sure that you click that link in the description below and it'll take you right over to that Facebook group. But again, you have to be subscribed to the channel. So subscribe first if you're not already and then click the link. There you go. I also just started a Facebook page for this channel as well. So make sure that you like that while you're on Facebook and also feel free to follow me on TikTok, Pinterest, or on Instagram. All of those are linked below as well. For any of my written step-by-step -step Cricut tutorials, be sure to check out my blog at mrcraftypants.com. That'll be linked down below as well. And yeah, I think that's it. I, I think we covered everything. So yeah, like I'm just, I'm just so excited you guys about everything that's happening everything that's going on and just for your participation in all of it you all you all really make my day truly make my day so thank you so so much for that you have no idea how much of an impact that makes on my life so thank you thank you thank you as always thank you for watching today's video i cannot put into words how grateful i am for each and every single one of you all and until next time Stay crafty.